In this alpine climbing video, we discuss ingesting food and layering clothes for comfort. As in most outdoor sports, layering for activity is essential. With alpinism, you move from periods of high exertion, where you expend huge amounts of energy, to periods of minimal movement and freezing. Base layers often consist of wool or synthetic fibers. These base layers should be thin and wick moisture away from your body, as well as having properties that keep them from smelling too bad after several days of wear. To this system, my short sleeve, long sleeve system, I'll start adding um, insulation and jackets, usually four to five layers depending on the conditions. So on top of this, I like to add a little bit of insulation, a uh, you know, Patagonia R1 fleece or some sort of lightweight fleece that's breathable yet warm and light. On top of that goes my soft shell jacket that can break the wind and breathe very well for high output activities. On top of that will go some sort of puffy jacket. This is an insulated um, synthetic puffy jacket. Insulation layers tend to focus on light, compressible materials. Synthetic puffy jackets have taken over the role that thick fleece jackets once dominated. Alpine insulating layers are best used with a hood that also fits over your helmet to maximize heat retention. And then finally, a wind jacket, super duper light, you know, three ounces maybe, um, packs up the size of a baseball, can throw it in and out of my pack, blocks the wind, great for belays um, or just hanging out. And this I might substitute with a Gore-Tex layer, something waterproof, um, and or bring that in addition to this. Once again, this system is not waterproof, but is very water resistant and quick drying and very useful for high output activities. Alpine shell layers will depend on the climate that you spend time in. If you are in the Northwest or a winter environment or at high altitude in the Alaska range, then a hard shell jacket may be the way to go to ensure staying dry. That said, many alpine climbing missions may make use of high pressure systems and dry mountain conditions, so a soft shell layer may be your best option. In cold environments, a lightweight and packable down parka is nice to throw over all your layers for belays or early mornings and evenings when you're less active. For your lower half of your body, pants with zippered vents can be nice for hiking or skiing uphill. However, the extra bulk and weight may not be worth it for summer alpine climbing pants. For winter ice climbing, I'm a big fan of the Farmer John Union suit. Yup, the onesie. Though wearing a onesie, you may drastically reduce your sex appeal. It does a powerful job of keeping your core warm for those extra cold days. The other main consideration for managing the cold focuses on hydration and calories that you consume. Proper hydration and food intake should begin days prior to your alpine adventure. Adequate hydration and high calorie diets will keep your metabolic rate high and your core warm. Don't skimp on fats. On Alaska range trips, butter and bacon can be your best friends to keep you warm and yummy cheese also works well. For alpine snacks, consider gels and shot blocks over bars as bars tend to freeze in cold environments. My thoughts on alcohol, it's delicious. Alcohol, though helping you feel warm for a few minutes, can expedite hypothermia by acting as a peripheral vasodilator, which initially makes you feel warmer, but cools your body core temperature even faster.